Ukraine's fire Okter TB2 drones firing tiny guided missiles have wreaked havoc on Russian forces in Ukraine. The Russians are also flying armed unmanned aerial vehicles over Ukraine, and they're talking up kills, too. But there's a difference of scale, potentially a big one. The Ukrainian Air Force and Navy probably can keep TB2s in the air around the clock. Russian forces, by contrast, are flying fewer Ryan drone sorties over Ukraine, tweeted Samuel Bendet, an expert on the Russian military with the Center for a New American Security in Washington, D.C. The proof is in the videos and photos of Russian drones and their victims that have circulated O. Oh. The Kremlin has released several drone video feeds depicting successful strikes on Ukrainian vehicles. But only several. Evidence of Ukrainian drone strikes is much more abundant. The analysts at the Oryx blog have documented around 60 kills by TB2s, but only 6 by Orions. At the same time, there's photographic evidence that the Ukrainians have shot down at least one of Russia's killer drones. Yes, the Russians have shot down at least three TB2s, but the Ukrainians can afford to lose more drones. The Turkish-made TB2 is a 1, 400-pound, propeller-driven UAV with a 39-foot wingspan, a sensor gimbal with a laser designator and underwing pylons for 14-pound MAM missiles. Steered via satellite or line-of-sight radio, a TB2 can patrol for 24 hours, tracking enemy forces, designating targets for laser-guided artillery shells and blinking tanks and other vehicles with its own munitions. The closest Russian analog is the Krones Tatarayan. Fifty feet from wingtip to wingtip, the one-ton, propeller-driven Orion has roughly the same sensors as a TB2 and Cornet-guided missiles that are similar to the MAM, but the first generation of the drone lacks satellite communications. That means a first-gen Orion can't range farther than a couple hundred miles from its operators. Newer Orions have SATCOM, but it's not clear Kronstadt has delivered any of these upgraded airframes yet.